Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to cover the solution for this question called to wait counts per frequency. At the same time, uh, I'm going to explain this piece of code and also I'm going to follow the general staff list for following the coding interview. So let's get started. A social media company is trying to monitor the activity on their site by analyzing the number of the tweets that occur in select time periods. So these periods can be partitioned into smaller time chunks based on a certain frequency every minute, hour, or day. So for example, if you have a period between 10 to 10k, so it will be partitioned into the following time chunks with the frequency. For example, if it's every minute, then it is going to be 10 to 69 for the first chunk, so on and so forth. For the hour, the first chunk is 10 to 3609. So something, so on and so forth. Um, so notice that the last chunk may be shorter than the spe specified frequency's chunk size, and we always end with the end times of the ta of the period. So let's design a, and implement an API to help the company with their analysis. We are going to implement a tweet count class with the constructor initializing the tweet count object with two APIs. One is called the record tweet, the other one is called get tweet count per frequency. So for the record tweet, we have two parameters, the tweet name and the corresponding timestamp. We are just going to record the tweet name and the corresponding timestamp. And for get tweet counts per frequency, we have the frequency, which is anyone among minute, hour, or day, the tweet name, and the start and timestamp, we want to get the time chunk uh, frequency statistics. So this is an example, uh, and we have some constraints. So the constraint says we have the time, start time, and end time is anywhere between zero to a, a billion. And the time minus the start time is anywhere between zero to 10K. And there will be 10, 10 to the power of four, which is 10K calls in total to record tweet and the get tweet counts per frequency. So usually in the production system, um, the timestamp, the start timestamp is pretty much fixed. Uh, when I say fixed, is uh, it should be like the start second uh, for a certain hour or a certain day, something like that for a specific time zone. Uh, but here, the start time can be anywhere within the hour or within the minute. So um, it's quite different from the production system for for like the statistics uh, reporting. But um, uh, usually, um, we care more about the time, the efficiency for record tweets then the guy tweet count per frequency because this one it can be computed offline but for this one uh, it can it, it potentially can affect the the speed for the production system so uh so let's say we are going to um, put the efficiency for record tweet to a higher priority then it comes to our solution so we are going to have a like map the map the key of the map is the tweet and the value is the list of the time for the corresponding tweet. So for the constructor, very easy thing, we're just going to new this map. For record tweet, we have the tweet name and the timestamp. So if it doesn't contain the tweet name, we are just going to put a new key value pair into it with the value as an empty array list. Um, otherwise, we are going to get the corresponding list and then add a timestamp. And then for the get tweet count per frequency API, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, first initialize a frequency, which is the result we are going to return. If the if the thing if we don't have the corresponding na tweet name we have recorded before, then we are just going to do nothing and then return an empty list. Otherwise, we are going to get the times the, the timestamp list and then sort it, and then uh, we are going to interpret the the duration. So if it is minute, we have the duration second to be set to be sixty. Otherwise, if it's hour, then it's uh, three thousand six hundred, and so on and so forth. So if the duration second is equal to zero, which means um, the frequency string is illegal, then we are just going to return empty list. And then it comes to our major logic, which is uh, to get the final result list. So we are going to set the duration start uh, as a start timestamp and the duration end initialized as the start the minimum between the end time and the dur the real duration end, which is start time plus the duration second minus the one. 
and then um, we have this for loop. So for this for loop, we initialize the iterator. So the iterator is actually the iterator within the the within the uh, so within the tweet time array or the tweet time list. And then we need to make sure that the duration start the duration is legal, which means the duration start is uh, anywhere uh, smaller or equal to n time. So uh, here we will try to skip anything that is smaller than the duration start. So we just keep plus plus the iter if the current timestamp is smaller than duration start. Otherwise, we are going to have a for loop. Um, so if the if like the current the timestamp is for the tweet is within the duration, then we are just going to plus plus the current frequency and the plus plus the iter. Finally, when we jump out of this while loop, we are just going to add the frequency into the frequency list and update the duration start and duration end. So that's pretty much it about this code. Uh, the runtime for record tweet is going to be uh, all of one, and for get tweet comp per frequency API, suppose for a tweet we have n, the n, n entries, then because we have the sorting, it is going to be n lock in. So, so actually you could do better than that by uh, sacrifice some efficiency for record tweets, something like uh, we could uh, make it a sorted list so that in the sky tweet uh, count per frequency, we don't need to sort it. So like if you want to keep it sorted, then this one it is going to be every time it is going to be log in because we are going to uh, do a binary search to find a place and then insert it in, in the middle. And then for this one, it is going to be linear. So it's kind of like a balance between the two. So that's it for our, uh, the current solution. If you have any better idea about the solution, feel free to leave some comments below. If you like this video, please help subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.